Hi, I'm Jeff Farnwald, director of the MBA program at Rockford University. About 18 months ago, the Rockford Chamber of Commerce set out to make networking easier in Rockford by identifying area people you should know in business. Currently, 41 people have been recognized and celebrated as one of these people. This series of talks held at Rockford University was designed to provide a vehicle for the public to hear from and learn about each of the people you should know. I hope you enjoy this talk. Welcome to our People You Should Know talks at Rockford University. We're happy to be back here. And uh, kicking off the series is Dr. Jack Becker, um, former president of Rock Valley College. Dr. Becker was part of the 2011 People You Should Know honorees. Um, during his tenure at the college, they opened a downtown Rockford Learning and Opportunity Center, um, built a new science and mathematics building, and also renovated the library and physical education center. Dr. Becker is committed, was committed to addressing community challenges, and he initiated a Running Start program for high school juniors and seniors. He is active in the community and has served on multiple boards, including Rockford Health System. His talk is titled, The Forgotten Student. Please help me welcome Dr. Becker. Good afternoon. Nice to see you all here. Colleges and universities have to be, have to reflect the challenges of their communities. My first presidency was in the tree fruit region of um, Washington State. We actually had a 65 acre experimental orchard where we grew the kind of fruit that you're going to, to eat five and ten years in the future. Wenatchee Valley College was the college and it was the home of the Fuji apple. That, that apple was made by the industry working with the college and when a, n a normal bushel of apples would cost maybe $20 on a wholesale thing, when the Fuji came out, they went up, up to $80 a bushel when they came out initially. So you can imagine what that did to that community and it was relatively short-lived because everything can be stolen in terms of tree stock and, and other places and now Fujis are grown everywhere. But before, when there was just from one place, one small community, um, it, was, it was a boon to the industry. So if you think about Rockford, what kinds of things do you think the colleges and the universities need to be addressing? Okay. Clearly, we know about aviation. We know about manufacturing. And actually, nine or ten years ago, when I came here and interviewed for the position at Rock Valley College, there were many people who were telling, telling me that the manufacturing community did not feel that Rock Valley College cared for them. So over the past 10 years, our faculty and staff at that college, we worked hard to create opportunities for, for connection between the manufacturing community and the college. One of our greatest skill, um, coups was to create a program that we initially called the Golden Eagle Manufacturing Program. And it was a program where a student would work half time in a manufacturing company and they would be, and the rest of their time, they would be taking 15 to 20 credits at our college learning many manufacturing engineering technology. The students uh, didn't have to pay for their courses that was paid either by financial aid or from, from the, the, the company that was hiring them. And the company had the first shot at interviewing people, gradu people who were graduating. We've graduated about 65 students in that program over the past five years. And I think 
I think about 94% of them took jobs initially in Rockford, full-time jobs. So the issue that I want to zero in on, though, is, is not the typical ones, you know. If you're, if you're a community college or a university in this area, you have to think about aviation, you have to think about health care, you have to think about manufacturing. But what are we missing? And I think the most issue, important issue, is that of poverty. So I'm going to talk a little bit about poverty and the role of a college in terms of to, to deal with what I think is our regional's most pressing issue. I'm going to take you back to 1970 when Dr. Carl Jacobs, who stayed at Rock Valley College as president for 30 years, that doesn't happen very often, but Carl was actually he was 28 or 29 when he started. And at that time, the wealth index in Rockford was 2% above the national average. In 2010 and 2011, the same wealth index for our area was 18.5% below the national average. So in 40 years, our community has gone to be in an affluent community to one that is almost 20% below the norm. In 1970, you didn't have to have a have, you didn't have to have a community college degree or a college degree to get a job in this community. The employers, mostly manufacturers, would do training. And they would train good people, and then they would keep them for their whole time. When I studied this community before I came here, it was clear that it was a good match for me, because neither of my parents finished high school. My dad didn't go to high school. My dad went through the mer to the Navy through the World War II, and he was lucky enough to work with Anheuser-Busch, not doing anything with beer initially, but actually making cornstarch. He worked hard. He worked shift work, meaning the first two weeks of a month, he would work from 8 to 4. The next two weeks, he would work from 4 to 12. And from the next two weeks, he would work from midnight to eight. And he did that for almost 25 years. He wasn't very easy to get along with. But as a psychologist who, sti stu who studied um, physiology and, and its relationship, we know now that that kind of a leap sleep cycle has messes your minds up, your hormones up. And my dad probably felt that. But still, he, he loved that his income working with Anheuser-Busch without an education took care of a family of five. This week, President Obama stated that we have never in the history of record keeping had a time when African American men had a higher unemployment rate than they do today. And in clearly, if you look at our, our own community, Rockford, we have huge numbers of people, many of them diverse, many of them African American, who may already have decided that they will never find a quality job that can sustain a family. And that's part of our community. 
we've all been through the great recession and it's hurt most every class of people but the the hurt that people experience is very very different depending upon the income that they were making before the recession for example if you look at the area around Rock Valley College a lot of middle-class homes and some rather nice homes in 2000 the average income for people in the zip code around Rock Valley College the fits is a family income was seventy five thousand two hundred and sixty three dollars that was the median number in 2010 after the recession it dropped to fifty nine thousand nine hundred dollars so a loss of twenty percent if you look at the houses in the west side in two thousand and the average family income was thirty six thousand today or in 2010 it's twenty five thousand dollars and that's a thirty three percent decline and if you think about it and I know there's a lot of graduate students here who probably are used to work to living with very little but at the same time if you were working if you were a married couple with children and you were making twenty five thousand dollars you would have a hard time to live property assessment in our region has dropped twenty seven percent since two thousand and eight unemployment in our region continues to be first or second worst worst in the state and last week last week Sunil and I Sunil Puri and I were talking about this and he and he actually said that we were the only community in the past month that had increase in in the state of Illinois that had increased unemployment we went from 10 to close to 11 percent um, since the beginning at uh, the end of the 2013 so so we live in a community that has major challenges and what is it that we should do as colleges as churches as businesses as philanthropists all of the all of the above to solve those challenges we simply can't ignore them and assume that the community is going to become a better one one of the one of the uh, solutions that I and other people have been experiencing uh, talking about is to create a community center on the west side that would not only be a, a learning center but it would be a place for people to get many needs filled it might have a clinic it might have a community college but that community college would not only offer transfer courses and career courses it would have to offer English as a single English as a single single second language it would have to offer GED it would offer workplace skills it would it would have to be a whole community place that a person a student would go to and feel comfortable at 
We have some ex examples of that in community colleges that are working with their communities right now. If you go into Chicago, there's a wonderful building in a very bad part of town, and you walk into that, and philanthropists have this built a gym for the community. And so you see people of all ages, all weights, working out. And there's a little cafe right attached to it. And the people who are poor are taught how to cook, how to serve, how to, how to, how to do everything. And everything that's prepared there is healthy, nutri nutritious food. Okay. The community college is there. There's a clinic, and, and people feel comfortable and safe on those grounds. It's not big enough to do job training, but once you bring people together and you show them healthy op opportunities and give them the, the possible bil possibility to make their lives better, they start aspiring higher than they did a year or two before. And the most important role of a faculty member at our college, at Rock Valley College, wasn't to teach history or teach philosophy or teach English. It was to create aspiration. And, you know, in, in the past month and a half, if you've been reading the Rockford Register Star, some of the editorials were focused on the notion, should Rock Valley College be a technical school and serving the needs of aviation because it'll bring us jobs? Or are we too set in our ways in the focus on the liberal arts. And it wasn't a time for me to write rebuttals as I was leaving the college. But at the same time, what I told our faculty, because a lot of our faculty were very upset, I said, folks, we don't hire you to he teach history or philosophy or math. We hire you to create possibilities. We hire you to take a student who maybe has never been successful and show them that they are miss they've missed the boat and they can jump back onto the boat because they have more ta talent than they ever expected they did. College is thinking always not only about the students who come to us, but the students who should be coming to us. And if we don't think about that, in no matter what role that we play in this community, we're going to miss so many people who need help. But from a very selfish perspective, if those folks don't find help, the rest of us are going to suffer as well. So that's my comments today. And um, did I talk long enough? Good. Good. So I think the next thing I, is, is for you to react to those conversations and for us to, to have a dialogue. So would anybody like to comment about Anything that I've said today? Do you have a time frame on the Well, the group that I was working with, um, and the mayor is involved, um, is, is looking at using historic buildings that can be restored with um, rebates of up to 45%. 
um, they're looking at the Barbara Coleman area. Um, and once the community would decide to take something, take to, to act on this, it would probably take three years to restore the site. So we were looking at three to four years to actually be in operation. Some of you, most of us have, have gone to places, um, Baltimore, Washington, Washington D.C., um, Kansas City, where they have restored um, <coughs> huge areas and made them into very cool places, very cool <laughs> places for, for um, you know, I grew up in St. Louis, and the Soulard area was a dump. And now if you go to the Soulard area in St. Louis, um, great places to eat, uh, open, um, open places to shop. Um, it's all been trans transformed. The, we have been working with a company that does that for a living. You know, they're whole, that's, that's what they do is they restore blighted areas. And we think that that would be a great way to, to m meet this, no, this uh, goal. The other thing is one of the mistakes that I made as a president at Rock Valley College is we opened a learning opportunity center on the west side, but we didn't put GED, ABE, and ESL in that program. So we don't teach t people, but the, the Latino community English, we're not focused, we, we're, we're very focused on all of those issues, but not at the L LOC. And so we're looking for a new building where we could double the space and we could incorporate all of that into the learning center on the west side. And I think we can do that whether or not we have this restoration project. If they're taking credit courses, many of those people would be able, will be, would have full Pell access. And at the community college, we, 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 fought, we frown on providing loans to students <coughs> for their first or second year of their school because the likelihood that they're going to succeed is not high enough to take the burden of the loan. And most of you probably know that if you borrow money and you default from the federal government, you mess up your life. It's, it's, it's very hard to go back to school, um, very hard to get transcripts. It, it's, it's a bad situation. So, so yes, we would have to find, for all of those other services, ESL, GED, and ABE, Almost every year that I was the president at Rock Valley, we were getting a higher percentage of the pot of money that the state has for those services because we have such good programs and we have such great outcomes. But we would have to find a new, new um, revenue path because the state just doesn't, doesn't meet a third of the need in our region. So we would have to figure out that out. <coughs> it's yes, yes. You know the um, the transform Rockford. Transform. Yes, ma'am. Yes, the transform movement is relatively recent. Um, but it, but I think you know. Um, but I think it's a natural fit to what to what they would want to do. So, so um, Mike Shalansky and I have met for two hours and talked about issues. But but um, the college hasn't officially said this issue should be a, a high priority. I'm sure that will happen. I'm sure that will happen. But right now, um, 
the state of transform Rockford as I see it is, is that they're still meeting in small groups all over the community and trying to determine um, the needs from, not from an organizational position, but from a person-to-person um, -person, uh, position. So I think eventually there'll be opportunities for those kind of conversations. When I have, you know, a lot of us have filled in cards about what, need, what is necessary. And when I filled my card in, I said, um, Rockford needs to have a program for college for all. We need a promise. We need the Rockford promise. We're, Dr. Head here at Rockford College has done a great job of trying to kick that off with District 205, the Rockford Public Schools, um, where if a student is going to graduate from the of Rockford Public School and does not need uh, remediation, um, he will probably offer a, a very healthy um, discounting of his tuition to bring that person to this school and to get their bachelor's degree. So that's, that's a wonderful opportunity. Um, and as important as that is, and Robert is one of my very best friends, if we can't do something similar at the community college, it won't make a difference. We, we have to do it not only for students who are in the liberal arts who are going to be great students at this great university, we have to find a way to provide access for people who are not who need remediation and need career education and and we have to figure out that out. We, this community hasn't done that yet. Other comments? Yes, dear. It's it's going to be com connected to Rock Valley College. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. It's it's right. Yes, I'm glad she asked asked that question. Well, thank you for coming. Happy New Year. The sun's out. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you. <laughs>